I've never wanted to be a legislator in a place that I stay in. Even in Urungo West, I never belonged to Urungo West. My farm was in Urungo West. To Urungo West. I was chairman of Marsh West, yet I come from the Midlands. I was the chairman of Mines and Energy. I'm not an engineer. I can carry on. So I, I thought I would just warm everybody up. Let me, first of all, recognize the Zamara family, uh, which is here. Neva Nawaripo Patson, who's here. Uh, let me recognize the leader of the MDC. Uh, he's a brother, but of late he's a Sekuru. Ndimoyo, Amai Ndimoyo. So today he said, Kom Zukuru Wagadi, Ndikata Ndira Hit Sekuru. Advocate Nelson Chamisa. I see the um, Auntie uh, Coco here. She's very good friends with my Mainini beauty. And let me tell you this. I'll tell you this, when my security minister was, I think, state security minister, she said to me, we must confront him about you. And we went to Shishawasha, and we asked him about you. And my Nini said, I need to know Sekuru, where my friend is. And uh, did must more or less give us an answer that you're okay. And he said, no, don't worry. She, she, she's okay. And she was passionate about that. So uh, whether, whether he knew where she was, I'm just trying to explain the effort, not to say that my uncle abducted her, no, but an effort was made to go to the Minister of State Security and say, go, Sekuru, Shamwa Yangu Kupi, and we're together. I know you've never heard that one, but we did uh, confront him on that. You certainly have been um, a fearless person in this regard. Dirk Frey is a, he's a, he's a commander, he's a comrade in many ways. I also want to recognize Bishop Magaya, or oh, a strong man in many ways. He's also part of Yard. He chairs us at Yard. So he's in many organizations that stand for the truth. There's not many people who want to chair an organization that Temba Mliswa leads, but he's brave enough to do that. <laughs> in the religious side, we've got uh, Pastor Ivan, who's here. I also want to recognize the hierarchy of the opposition party. Zani PF, if there are any here, let me know, because I don't want you to say that uh, I only went one side. Uh, you must let me know you are here, because I believe this is not about the politics of the day, but it's about being human. I'm here because I'm human, and I believe that people must be free. I see uh, uh, Honorable Scala there, uh, my good brother and colleague in Parliament, Honorable Chibaya, the political commissar of, uh, the, of the opposition in power, the opposition in power. And then, uh, uh, <laughs> and then the media supremo, uh, Oleki, the Honorable, I see also, uh, uh, who's here, uh, it's good to see him here. Uh, I s Doug, I don't have to mention you once I mention your dad. In our African language, we can't, in our culture. Once we mention your father, we've mentioned the whole clan. I also want to recognize uh, of course the commander of the youth Obey, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't. I can't I can't miss that. I can't miss that. The van <laughs> they are not only the van of the party, but they're the vanguard of the country because they're youthful. And of course the Secretary General of Stalos a yard commander. Uh, President, I've never told you this. To me, I, I'm more excited about the vibrancy of the youth. When I look at the future of anything, I look at the youth. To me, that's probably the most vibrant youth organ I'm yet to see in any political structure in this country. I know you're a youth leader, but I want to talk about complementary position by position. Position. I, I always say Zani Pierre are in trouble because of this brilliant, vibrant youth, and that's what it is. I call it a generational consensus. 
with the general legislation of the regardless of which parties belong to, the generation at some point must get together and must move together. That's what is important. Yad again uh, celebrates uh, uh, this move. Let me uh, now get to the business of the day. Master of Ceremonies, thank you very much. I'll be very short. What I want to really say is, uh, there's a saying that goes, the anticipation of death is worth than death itself. It's, the anticipation of death is worth than death itself. To think that you're going to die is worth than dying. We are confronted with a situation where nobody knows. Uh, Auntie Justine, you said the kids, it was emotional. For them to sing happy birthday, I asked myself, the father is not there. They believe the father is there. But what struck me is the innocence of children. More than anything else, the innocence of children. How innocent they are, how they believe everything is proper. And in all the things, my question is, why do this to the innocent? I can take it, but why do this to the innocent? They sing happy birthday for their father who they have not seen. And they still believe he is there. And we wish you many more. You know, that is uh, what prompts me as legislators. I recall uh, Advocate Nelson Chamisa did ask this question, moved the motion in Parliament for this to be debated. At that time, probably Parliament found it difficult to have it as a motion to be debated. And I was just sharing with the Honorable Scala there that we need to get it going. Not only for, for the family, but we do it as legislators to ensure that we are able to get the state to account for somebody who's not there. It is part of our role. And I think if we don't do that, then we certainly have a problem. I also want to acknowledge members of parliament who are here, who have seen, I cannot mention all of them, but they know what we're talking about. So we have the battle stick, which we now must run with. My sister Linda is here. She's done many things. And I always used to question uh, Advocate Nelson Chamisa on women. But I see her being beaten up. I see women proportional representation in Parliament, not to say anything. That to me, I used to just say to me, but seriously, we've got 60 women in Parliament. More to represent women. Another woman is beaten up, brutalized, and they are quiet. Forgive me, that's why you probably said the police were sexist, and I said, but what then are you doing besides looking good and, and all sorts? I was compelled to say that because they never said anything about another woman who was being brutalized. And I challenge any member of parliament who's a woman to stand up today at the time. What did they say? Whether you hate Linda, you like her. The principle is that she's a woman. She's defenseless. She's being brutalized. Why are we quiet about that? Advocate Nelson Chamisa, it is important that when we have people in position, there must be capacity. We must make no apologies for capacity. I see the team that you have in your structures now. The capacity is amazing. That should be reflected in Parliament. Not, not one party in Parliament should be reflected. That's the reason why I'm challenging you today, as I've always said, that there must be a, a criteria put together for those who represent you in Parliament. There must be a criteria put together. People have a right to do further education. 
But capacity is critical in addressing issues of importance, especially at national level. We are seen wanting, and the blame lies in the political parties of which I don't belong to any. <laughs> and I know other Chamisa is listening to this. The organ is here, the vice chairperson is here. We must have a criteria of the qualifications of a councillor, the qualifications of a member of parliament, the qualifications of those in the Senate. The constitution is too dead on that. 40 years if you want to be a senator, 21 years if you want to be a member of parliament, and again, uh, you are a registered voter. That's it. Zambia requires you to have all levels. So can these criteria start at party level, not at national level? <coughs> I think. <laughs> can it start at party level, not at national level? You are saying, Honorable Melissa, change the constitution. Can you first start changing your constitutions at party level? Then we go up. It's a challenge that I'm throwing to the leadership of parties in this country. Then we have fair representation. I have always taken risks. Itai worked for me at Salt Lake. He was a spokesperson. And uh, we had a problem once. That's when Patson came. I think he was worried. Those days I was very temperamental that I was going to, to, to beat his brother up. So he came to me and says, I'm looking for you. And I said, why? He says, I need to talk to you. I know my brother has done this and that, but can we talk about it? Then I realized he had a wise brother. I stay with Patso in the same yard. I've received threats from all sorts, but how can you stay with Patso? But I say, he's my brother. Patson is building a house. He's been helping the Thai family. So I've said my contribution is you must stay with me until you finished building your house. But it is the biggest risk staying with Patson. You know that. <laughs> so pray for me, Bishop Makai. <laughs> and I want to end by saying that I'm family and uh, I really want to thank you for that. You know, my Zamara, I always donate maize to you. I donated a ton the last time. This year I'm going to donate 10 bags because it was a drought. So my job is to make sure you're healing it. So others, may you donate the protein. I've done this type of food. I want to thank you. I thank all the comrades who are here. Advocate Nelson Chamisa, it's magnanimous of you to be here. It's not the number of people we wanted here. We wanted people who are sincere, who have love. And that's what is gathered amongst us here. I wish you all the best and thank you very much. Thank you.